a shiny new MacBook with a 1.6 GHz Core i5 DDR3 memory, integrated graphics, two ports, and macOS, starting from £1,099 or dollars because exchange rates. What if it could all be done for just £90? And it has a 1.9 GHz processor. So, welcome back. If you've seen my video on my setup, you would have seen my computer running macOS. Just a quick update, I've now updated to Mojave after a lot of effort and upgraded to an RX 480. More on that in an Instagram TV video coming soon. So anyway, I've been using my iPad Air 2 for a while for portable working, mainly for working at school and getting things done without having to be at home at my computer. And that worked for a while, but the weaknesses of iOS and iPadOS became apparent pretty quickly. So obviously, my first thought was how could I somehow get the desktop programs I use, such as Fusion 360 and the Affinity programs, which I've already paid for on desktop and doesn't actually have an iPad version yet, away from my computer. And after TeamViewer had issues with getting the resolution right and not allowing me to remotely change it, I found Parallels Access. Now this did work great for some things, but terminal with secure shell which did help connect to other things in the house from away but the whole touchscreen optimized thing didn't work if you wanted to do a click and drag you had to hold down for an eternity just to be able to do that and yes I was able to run full desktop programs from an iPad but the experience was almost unusable which led to my next idea a laptop. This was all hypothetical at that point, so I didn't pay too much attention to the thousand pound plus prices. But I was eventually swayed by those stupid eBay notifications, and there I was, looking at used laptops, sorting by lowest price, constantly flipping to Reddit to check compatibility, and after a while, my watch was full of broken MateBooks, old ThinkPads, one of which I got a notification saying was reduced by ten pounds. So obviously, I did the logical thing and I brought a new laptop. A few days later, Hermes chucked it over the fence and the process was about to begin. Is that Christmas shopping paper? Yeah, I don't need that. Scissors. Scissors. I should hope not. King prawns. Nice Christmas cream prawns. Merry Christmas. I unboxed it. Ah, yep. Does it come on the charger? No, that was um that was the issue. The charges next door, they're not on the door. What the cars are there? I don't have a doorbell. I don't know if I can hard enough. Anyone have an knuckles? You need to get some I do. I can't believe you wanted this instead of my First thing first, Windows had to go. It's a mess, Microsoft can't make a functioning operating system. And it was claiming I had two point type support, which was a load of rubbish. So, cue the Ubuntu for web browsing and disk management until I realised Gparted, despite being the best partition tool I've used, didn't support any of Apple's file systems. And it just it just goes downhill from there. Back to disk utility for the USB installer. Installed Play for Bootloader, found the configuration file that matched my Intel HD 4400, and Nothing. A couple of hours later, I managed to actually boot the USB. No drives. Back again for attempt two, this time with file system drives, and there it was. Install OS 10 from Mac OS Sierra. I, I thought I'd just clarify, if, if you don't understand that, uh, Sierra is when it moved to macOS and you, 
Yeah. So back to Tamil and writing to Asian media before heading off to work. It's worth mentioning at this point I had accidentally wiped the USB drive with all of my DT work on it. Intelligence. By the time I was able to get back to it, I booted it, everything's going to find, partition drive, accidentally wiped out Linux, and click install, which of course didn't work. To try and best to fix it, besides it's probably best to just to start again. Right in social media. Again, kernel panic. Right of Clover. Kernel panic. Tried every pre-made earphone folder I could find on the whole internet. Kernel panic. Went on Reddit. Instant fix. Everything installed and I was finally able to get the setup. No touchpad. No red keyboard bobbly thing. No keyboard, no Wi-Fi, no sound, no Bluetooth, but I had one key thing, a 720p webcam. So, for the first time in my life, I took a profile picture. With the desktop loaded, full graphics acceleration working, which is Honestly, at first, it was time to install Clover. Copy the FR across, remove the right boot flag, great thing, and reboot it to test the new folder. Kernel panic. At this point, I just wanted to sleep and completely on sleep deprivation due to autopilot. I tried everything I could and eventually got to the right combination of drivers. Full folder in the description if anyone wants that. And I was in the desktop with no Wi Fi, so I trusted my brilliant, or someone's brilliant, horrendous driver, which failed because you, that's why. I rebooted to see if anything magically fixed it, and it kind of did. Open settings and saw a logo I never expected to see. I rushed onto my phone, paired them, enabled Bluetooth Wi-Fi tethering, and continued to download kernel extensions and programs for 400 kilobits a second before realising I had an Ethernet port. Eventually things installed, one driver got back to filling my hard drive, the old mechanical kind can I add with my year 7 homework because storage space, that's why. The next day it was time for the Hackbook's first field test. I had no idea how the battery would perform, if it would turn on, if walking to break the hard drive, if 400 kilobits is enough, but I went along with it anyway leaving the trusted but incapable iPad at home. It turns out Bluetooth only works after rebooting, because f you, that's why. And no, 400 kilobits is not enough. But I persisted, and it was actually a noticeable improvement over the iPad. I had no sound, no reliable Wi-Fi, the battery did last all day, and then it was the evening before dying instantly. Which reminded me, I needed to fix the battery indicator. About an hour of Google searches later, the battery indicator was working or not because it was stuck at 0% charging whatever the state because f*** you, that's why. Just one more late night and audio and battery status were fully working, Bluetooth still didn't work on first boot and was still the single worst way I've ever accessed the internet, beating Wear OS on public Wi-Fi and Android TV. I needed a better connection so I spent my physics lesson ordering a Wi-Fi adapter from Argos for around 9 99 Needed other drivers downloaded from the internet, and that scared me at first. But everything except the fingerprint sensor, obviously, now worked. Using in school, my top comment was, "Why do you have a school laptop?" And to that, I say, "Can a school laptop do this?" Others included, "Why or how to put Mac OS on there?" Magic. And most importantly, why doesn't the keyboard nipple work? It's the best part. Which to that, I say, it now does. Turns out I accidentally disabled it in BIOS to prevent things going wrong. Performance wise, it's okay. Works great, it's a second more portable device and is much more capable than an iPad with actually slightly better battery life. Not to mention the possible £56 I could earn if I actually bothered to sell it to CDX. And yes, I'm probably going to be taking offers for a while. But what about actual testing? Booting takes. Um, 
a while, which could be improved with an SSD when I get paid. RAM is 4 gigabytes, so upgrade to 8, which will definitely happen at some point. And programs, once <laughs> actually open, work as well or better than you'd expect from a 2013 laptop. Right clicking is still a bit temperamental, but the gestures do work nicely. The screen is quite impressive, not amazing viewing angles, but I am used to either sitting in fixed positions or looking at Android screens, so I'm not quite sure what I was expecting from that. And now seems like a good time for a sound test. For reference, here's my computer with a sound system I stole because my dad because he didn't know how to use it. <laughs> Here's my P20 Pro. And here's the Hackbook at full volume. Not the best, but I could just plug in my headphones for a better experience. The keyboard is great, and apart from the dodgy mouse pad, it's a good all around device. In fact, this whole video was made on this laptop to test its capabilities, and yeah, that, 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 didn't, that didn't happen. Uh, because exporting 4K video causes a kernel panic, which actually did get a Bluetooth working, but only on that one boot. So, Apart from my awful idea to sort everything on my computer is too terrible a hard drive and access it from the network, the whole video editing initially was alright. So would I recommend this? I would say yes. If you don't need a laptop for its power or gaming performance, then go for it. Once everything's set up, it works better than it does with Windows and you still get the Apple logo, all for less than £100. You can't go wrong. And uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be demonstrating games, just stream them, please.